Many names. Some know him as Jehovah. Others know him as Jah. Others know him as Dios. Others know him as Du. As Muslim, the, from which the community I come from and many others for, throughout the world, we recognize him as being Allah. And um, I'd like to greet all of you in peace. We say peace and blessings, uh, uh, Hotep, and in many other languages, we say peace to each other. And of course, as a Muslim, I greet you with Asalaamu As Alaikum. Um, I don't have a poem, but I will share my Facebook status with all of you. <laughs> this morning I woke up, and um, recently I've been very troubled by certain decisions that have been made by uh, this Florida governor mm. <laughs> and uh, the government here in Florida about how to treat the educators of this mm -hmm. state, public school educators. Mm -hmm. And um, you take the, the whole decision to create merit pay on a system where they know that certain populations accept education more and others don't accept it. Mm -hmm. As the way they should, and we know why it's not so quickly accepted in certain communities mm. because of our distrust towards a system that has failed us for over five, 400, 500 years. And so we see that in the children today that are extremely rebellious against this system. And so we are, we wonder why <laughs> many of us wonder why why are they so rebellious? Mm -hmm. Because they can't find themselves in the curriculum that is being taught to them. I see. Many of our children, they're confusing basic words like in, and, and on. Mm. And so here we come and try to teach them what they consider to be humongous words. We're like, this is a basic word. There's a gap that is forming between the educational system and our children. Mm -hmm. And the standards that they impose are low. Mm -hmm. okay. Something's wrong. You find teachers teaching to a test. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, we do not garner the benefits, the full benefits that our children could produce. Right. So because many of them are doubting in themselves, now they can't, they can't achieve as what their potential is. And I'll say this. What's coming down the pipeline, we're seeing the setup, quite possibly, we're seeing right before our eyes of, of a black man that, was, that rose to power very quickly, right before our eyes. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of us may be talking about oh, the hypocrisy of the government this and the hypocrisy of the government that, but I'll just say this. And just knowing the, the reality of, of many things, I'm not going to say yeah, I know it all, but the reality of many things. Yeah, there is hypocrisy involved, but it felt good to see our brother being announced as president of the United States. Mm -hmm. A black man in that position, but he is where the real deception lies. Yeah, you rise into power very quickly, but now you demonize him uh, before the whole nation. And you're bringing out Donald Trump and all these other political figures now, trying to make him look like he's incompetent. When, the, when every, every, every time that the man comes right before you, you hear brilliance in everything that he has to say, even when he's wrong. You hear an elevated language. And though as quickly as they've risen him to power, they're going to strike him down. And so what typical examples do our youth have when it comes down to black males? Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Two examples of leaders that have been shot and killed by this very system. So now, up until recently, you would ask a child, a black child, do you want to be a leader? No, I don't. Why? Because <laughs> look what happened to that. <laughs> yep. But now with Barack Obama in power, because our people believe in the system, they're so attached to the system. We are so attached to the system. They see Barack Obama as president. Oh, my God, black president. All set up but our children still remain as ignorant as they could be. Every day as a public school educator, I, I have to ask myself the reason. Why? Why am I going to teach these children that are being molded not to 
readily receive what I have to teach them. Mm. Even though what I have to teach them, in whatever subject, is meant to benefit them. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I posted this up this morning on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this came from, for any of you that have studied the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, this comes from those teachings. And, um, I'm going to say this. The duty of a civilized person is to teach the uncivilized. Duty is symbolized, I'm sorry, duty is synonymous with love. So in essence, we must grow in love to teach others through patience and hard work how to live a more qualitative lifestyle. In turn, we must continuously grow in love to ever submitting to the process of refining our way of life. While we are in a position to teach others, and every time that a child walks around us and their, their pants are sagging and their manhood is showing, <laughs> we have a duty and responsibility to tell them why they shouldn't be sagging their pants like that. You know, when you, you flip the word sagging, what, what is the spell? Niggas. <laughs> mm. And um, not to judge them, but to uh, put some words on their minds. Put, some, put something in their minds to make them think. You know, who taught you to do that, and why do you do that? Don't judge them, just make them think. Yeah. And they'll start sorting things out for themselves. Nice. Um, every day I wake up and I have to give myself a new reason why I should go out <laughs> and teach yes, these beautiful babies yeah. every day. Every day we should position ourselves in some kind, of, some kind of way to teach others, but at the same time be so humble that we could learn from those whom we are teaching and learn from others. We're always going to be encountering someone that knows more than us mm -hmm. in one, one area or another. So those are just my words. Beautiful, brother. Thank you for coming. Thank you.